I'm going to make things worse. So what I want to do is just act like I'm going to hold still and I would like to allow her to come and sniff me if she has the confidence to do so. Now, I've already been here and sniffing crotches is normal. Uh, as like, so she got a sniff and she wants to walk away. I've got a bunch of high value reinforcers in my hand or high value chicken, these are chicken liver treats. So what, <laughs> I like how she's sitting on her butt. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step in and drop a treat, drop a treat. Drop a treat. I'm not saying anything to her. Just every other step, I'm taking, I'm dropping a treat. I'm gonna come and sit over here. Just film her. And uh, yeah, go ahead and just grab a seat. Now, did she take any of the treats? Yeah, she picked up a few. Did she stop taking them here? Yeah, right there might be the last. Okay. All right, so let's come back to me. So basically what you want to do is give your guests, I would give them about seven or eight treats and have them just drop one every other step um, as they come in and have them come and sit down. Now, uh, when uh, for whoever the human is who lives here, if she, if she misses one, just tap your foot next to the treat so she gets it. Them. After you've done this a couple times, she'll know, oh, there's gonna be treats on the floor. And so what we're trying to do is build an association when somebody comes in, treats fall from the sky. Well, I had it all wrong. People are actually good. The visitors are good, not bad. So what we want to do is we want to, and the person should not look at her, not talk to her, certainly not try to pet her, ignore her. Now eventually what's going to happen is she gets more confident, she's going to start approaching. You film her now and see how she's a little bit, she's pausing right there. She's a little bit stiff and she didn't feel comfortable coming any closer. So if I ask her to come or I do things like that, then that's going to cause her, yeah, come back to me. Um, it's going to cause her to get a little confused. And if we pet her when she's nervous like this, which a lot of people do, we're going to make it worse. Now, once she kind of calms down and settles down, and if she approaches the person, they're going to hold their hand out to the side like this and don't look at her. And I wouldn't even say anything. And see, I'm holding my hand still. After that, she came back and sniffed a second time. Now, she's lingering. I've been here for a while, so she's behaving better probably for me than she will for other guests at first. But after a while, she'll feel more comfortable. Now she's seeing that there's treats over. She's coming to get the extra treats. But again, it's a positive reinforcer. We're helping her feel good about it. Now, um, uh, when we do this, the other thing we can do is if, she, if somebody's going to be here for a long time, one of the great things you can do is take your dog for a walk with the person. Dogs literally process things by moving forward. If I have a dog that's fearful of thunderstorms, I tell people put on a, a raincoat and take your dog out for a half an hour walk in the, in the rain. For a minute or two, they won't like it, but after a while, they're like, oh yeah. So now she's seated and she's kind of off, uh, off to the side of the room, so I'm just gonna offer a treat. I'm not telling her to come. I'm just making it available sideways and she gets to come in her own volition. Now, I, in a, as a behavior or training reinforcer, I would like to say the word C-O-M-E. But I'm not saying that because I think that'll spook her. You just want to have her approaching the guest, feel comfortable approaching the guest and walking away. Now, if she won't, if she stays like in her old chair, this is an inside joke. But if she sits like, so uh, can you uh, craftily can uh, get up, keep me in the shot, but walk around and walk back towards uh, the closet next to your fridge so you can kind of see us both. There you go. Can you see us both? Whatever mm -hmm. distance you need. So now, if she won't come to the person, the person holds out the treat to the side and she won't come. Well, there we go. She's coming now. But she's going to take this and probably walk away. So what you would want to do is a little bit of what I did to her earlier off camera is help her practice approaching the person. I've got a hair in my mouth. Um, so what I want to do is if she won't come to me, I'm going to throw a treat halfway distance between her and me and let her take it. And we want to let her take it and walk away. So we're, again, not going to give her eye contact and we're not going to talk to her. We just want to create a positive association. Normally, she's not going to linger like this. This is what she'll do once she starts getting more familiar and more comfortable. This is what we'd like to see, but this is because I've done a lot of other work with her. So, and then let's say she's further away. Again, I toss it there, let her approach it. And uh, I don't know if she's doing it right now. She's not doing it right now, but if you see her leaning, like her, this is her leg and she's leaning away, that's her indication that I don't feel comfortable yet because I want to try to keep one foot as far away from the person as possible. So this person should keep on tossing the treats like this until she walks up and lingers like she did there and her feet are underneath her and not behind her. So uh, now we can use the dog bed and throw it there. There you go. And we're not going to assign anything. We just want her to approach and walk away. Now eventually when she seems more comfortable, she's not breathing heavy and she seems more relaxed, we want to do this. We toss one there and then the guest is going to hold the treat here. So you want to toss and then put your hand here right away and just have them hold still. Make sure they don't move at all and nobody else in the room. If she's coming to take the treat from me and somebody over there drops something really loud, she might think that she gets startled and that she'll think it came from me. 
So when we're doing these things, make sure that we stop cooking. We, you know, everybody's in the room is paying attention. We don't have to stare at her, but just we don't want to have friendly fire of somebody slamming a door or dropping a plate and having her get spooked. So the idea is to help her practice approaching the person and walking away with her own volition until she feels comfortable. And if she sits or lies down, that's another good indicator. Uh, they, and uh, you can, they can give an offer another treat. Now these are a little, this is from PetSafe. This is a little treat pouch. I can actually open it up. It stays open and I can clip it to my belt. And then when I close it, nothing's gonna come out. So what you might wanna do is get one of these and every time a guest comes in, fill it up full of the, these high value tricky trainer treats I'm gonna live here with you and give this to the guest. Now the guest smells like the delicious treats that I get from time to time. This guest might be able to pay me off at any time, so I better be on good behavior with this guest. And then every, and that way the guests, whenever they feel like it, they just reach over here, grab one. But again, no command. That's an important stipulation. And no good dog or good girl or anything. And what you'll see is she'll start lingering longer and longer periods like she is right there. And make sure they always hold their hand out and hold it still. Um, now eventually, if you can ask her to sit, see how she sat kind of far away from me. That's another indicator I don't feel comfortable. When she sits or lies down, if she sits or lies down, she's probably gonna sit facing the person. When she starts sitting sideways, you're making progress. If she sits sideways or lays down and puts her back to the person, that's a really good sign of trust. So if she does, she's doing that sort of thing, that's a good indicator you're making progress and going down the right, the right path. Um, now one little bonus is what I would, one of the tricks I talked to you guys off camera about teaching a new trick or command, one of the tricks I would teach her is how to catch. The, the reason I like the catch is now she's lingering. I love this, yeah. Can we get another one? But she's comfortable with me because I've been here for two and a half hours. A guest is not gonna be able to achieve this. She's gonna take the treat and she's gonna run away. She's gonna do that over and over. Well, eventually what we wanna do is if you can teach her to catch, and I'll show you how in a second, or I'll tell you how, um, the guest can come over and say, sit. And if she knew how to catch, then I can throw the treat and she catches it. Now she gets to engage with the guest at a distance that she feels comfortable with. And eventually she'll sit closer and closer and closer, but now the guest is playing a game with her. It's fun. She doesn't have to have any contact. It can be done sideways. Now, when we throw, a lot of times for dogs, we go like this. Mabel, we go one, two, and then we throw in the third one, and they're looking and it hits them on the head. So when you throw it, you want to just throw one toss and try to make it such a good toss. What a great dog you are, Bean. Uh, such a great toss that all she has to do is open her mouth and it falls in her mouth. Now, to teach her how to do this, most of us, we throw it and the dog, it hits the dogs and then they lick it up off the ground. Well, to teach the catch, what I do is I would have somebody sitting on the floor next to her, somebody sitting here. And we throw one treat. I got it in her hair. <laughs> it's on the top of her head. But I throw one trick, uh, one treat. You can grab it for her. I think it's still in her afro. Uh, uh, but when she, uh, when she, if she doesn't catch it, we pick it up and give it back to the person. So that gives the dog the motivation to start taking it out of the sky. And eventually she'll, she just has to open her mouth. And then you start, when she starts doing it, then you throw a little bit this way, a little bit that way. I had a, do a dad in Santa Monica that he adopted the dog, brought it home for his kids, loved it, and then he tra traveled to salesman, he, and the dog was really fearful of men. Well, it was just happy he got out of shelters, so it was happy to be with anyone. Then he came back a month later, and the dog was petrified, and bark and growl at him. And this is the method that I use, is teaching the dog to catch, and then the dog, at first the dog would dad play catch with the dog about 10 feet away, then nine, eight, seven, six, and eventually the dog is right here. Now, for the last thing for the guest. When you're doing this, if you're a guest and you're watching this, refrain from trying to pet the dog until the dog is coming over and like touching you with his nose or making some sort of contact. Because uh, the more that you try to go over towards the dog, that's gonna spook the dog and you're gonna undo all the work that you did. This probably is gonna take two or three visits from, a, and it depends on the visitor. If you have a visitor that's like, really crazy man, well that dog's gonna be harder for the dog to, to feel, uh, figure that out and or feel more comfortable. So at first, kind of pick people who are a little bit more relaxed and also make sure that they will listen to you. A lot of people, but I'm good with dogs. Let me show you, I'm, no, I don't want you to pet. I, I, we've hired a professional, we just want to do this. But everybody will try to pet the dog, especially in-laws and blah, blah, blah. So just say, look, the best thing you do is just ignore her and let her feel comfortable. Well, this is Mabel, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that's fearful about meeting new people.